You can create variables, declare variables, and set them equal to a value, initialize them, um, or assign them a, a number, numeric value. But what if you want um, the user to be able to kind of interact with your program down here? You want to ask them a question and let them give you input from the keyboard. Um, well, I have to do a couple things to make that possible. The first is that I need to bring in uh, a library that allows me to do this, and that library is called java.util.scanner. So I can start, as I make more complicated programs, adding um, imported libraries up here. That just means that somebody else wrote the code that makes this thing work, and that's coming from a separate file, and my program would not usually include it unless I need it, so I won't um, bring these in unless I need them, but the way to bring them in is to write import and then um, the, 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 the library. All right. So I've brought the library in. Now the next thing I need to do is make myself a scanner. A scanner um, lets your program listen for keyboard input. Um, so my type of my of my my reader is the word scanner. Notice that S is capitalized. The next thing I'm writing is a variable name. So what do I want to call my scanner? Um, so maybe you call it keys or in something that represents to you in your mind what this thing is doing. So I'm going to call it keys because uh, it's coming from the keyboard. And then I'm going to tell the program to create this thing. And the way I do that is like this. And then I'm going to tell it what is the source of the stuff you're reading? Well, it's coming from um, my system's uh, default input type, which is the keyboard. Okay. So now I've got my variable here. Um, I've got this. It's my, a number of dogs and it's set to three. I can have a variable and then ask the user to input and overwrite what's in there. So let me um, ask a question. Uh, how many dogs do you have? Okay. And the way that I can read in is I can say the variable name and I can assign it the read from this thing. So I have to look at the variable to see what type it is to know what kind of read I have to do from the scanner. So this variable is a type int. So my scanner read is next int. Okay, and just to make sure it worked, I'm going to say you have dogs, dogs. Oops. All right, let's try this and see if it works. Run Alice, job application, how many dogs you have? Two. You have two dogs. Now you'll notice when this variable was initially created and initialized, a three's in there. When I run and read from my scanner, whatever the user types, it overwrites that value. So when I set a variable equal to a new value, it overwrites it so that when it prints it here, it's got a two in it. Okay? Sometimes you'll want to have a variable that has a value in it and you'll want to use it later. To read an input. Um, sometimes you don't need to do that. So maybe the first time I use this, I just want to set it to the value they're giving me. So here's what that would look like. I can both read from a scanner and declare my variable on the same line. That just means that variable doesn't exist till this moment when I'm reading into it. But you'll see the result should be basically the same. Well, not the same if the user types a different number. So let's try 10. Um, it will report how many dogs they have. Okay, That's how I would read for an integer. What if I have um, how, let's see, much does your dog weigh? And that could be a decimal value. So let's do dog weight. Um, now my variable type has changed to a double. So instead of next int, guess what? Makes perfect sense. Next double. I'll change my variable down here. Let's verify that that works. So now this thing is set up to take a decimal value from the keyboard. Um, let's say 22.5. And there it is. All right. So that is how you can get user input from the keyboard. It involves this little separate step to create a scanner for yourself so that you can read it in.